Hey YouTube, it's Friday morning. Bullseye and I are working on the deck. And uh, I started nailing the deck boards down here now. So um, I'm leaving them extend at that end six inches over. Now they're, some of them are longer or shorter, but I'm going to cut that off in one cut. So for now we're just um, working through here to see what boards fit where. I get getting through this angle cut here. Um, with these boards being six inches wide because of the full size lumber, really nice because it's 12, the deck is 12 foot wide and the boards, I'm not leaving any gap on them in case they want to um, shrink by themselves. And I'm also only putting one nail in. And what I mean by that is I'm only nailing if the board is rocking, I'll nail a high side or possibly in the middle, but I'm putting one nail in to keep, so that the board has the ability to shrink or swell, mainly swell up. I want to see if it's going to swell up, okay, or shrink. If they shrink um, and there's a gap on the boards, then I'll re-nail it quick, probably within a week is what I'm thinking. But for right now, I just want to nail it as light as I can to see how it's going to end up. Um, the nails that I got here, I'm not really happy with these nails, but they are what they are. They're called deck nails, patio deck nails. They have a fairly big head on them. They're easy to hit. They're easy to pull out. When you're driving nails into a deck, you know, you want to try and not miss the nail. Because especially with the softer wood here, you know, all you're going to do is put nail uh, marks or hammer marks in the wood so you want to try to avoid that uh, a lot of people don't like that I don't like it myself but so you want to try to nail gently or not gently but you know to, uh, accurately so that you don't get the, miss the thing I used to have what they call oval head siding nails it had a very small head little oval to it I used to really like those because you didn't have to sink the head in and you wouldn't catch your foot on it because it was oval your toe or whatever but I couldn't find them, so I'm reduced to using what they call deck nails. But just because they call them deck nails doesn't mean that they are the best for decks. But I'm using these. They're threaded. They're galvanized. Should be all right. Uh, just to give you a little hint here. When you're working with decks like this, if you've charged big money for the deck, and you're the type that has to have everything perfect or whatever, then you may not want to put two boards together that are different. You know, like this is a shorter board and then a full board. I'm into saving money. I'm not into showing off. So here's the thing. Uh, I put a short, I put a, an eight footer down there, basically a short piece. You gotta make cuts at each end so you have straight ends when they go together short piece and now if you see here I'm going to be cutting off another short piece here in a minute so since that's a full board the full length of the deck just going to make sure I have about the six inches down there at the other end that I need and then I'm going to nail this cut this off and when I cut it off I can use it for the next piece hopefully okay um, that's one way to save a little bit of money on these decks because you can add up a lot of money quickly with these um, the thing for this deck would have been to get 16 footers or to cut, cut 16 footers and do the whole deck out of 16 footers you wouldn't have no splicing but I don't care about that the splicing is not going to hurt nothing it's wood this is the nature of wood so that's what's happening here sometimes when you're uh, working with the board you might have a board that has a bow in it Depending upon how bad the bow is, will depend upon the technique that you use to um, to bring the boards together. Now, one one way to do this is to take a a chisel and drive it in on a little bit of an angle like this, and you can use that to pull the board over. You don't want to goof up this edge, so then you can nail that and then you're in pretty good shape. If the board's really bent bad, <coughs> you might have to go to a little more drastic measures. And what that would be, I'll show you here.
what you could do is possibly nail the board down, leave the head stick up so you can get at them, okay? And then maybe a bigger pry bar to pry that. And if things really get drastic for you, what you want to do then is get yourself a two foot long board that's going to go from one rafter to the other, or one joist to the other. Okay, let me grab a board here and I'll give you an example of this. So in other words, let's say that this thing's a, an inch away and we want it closer. Now there is a little bit of a gap here because one board's thicker than the other, but I'm not worrying about that because that's again what wood is. What you want to do, if the bend is right here, you want to nail a board from one joist to the other on an angle like this, okay? Then what you do is you take and just, you can take a guess at this, you don't have to be perfect, just mark this cut this on an angle, okay? Then you'll take that angle piece and you'll put it in here. These are nailed, okay? These are nails stick up. You'll drive this angle piece in here until it forces that board over. Now, uh, it all depends on how bad the board is bent. This is the most drastic I've ever had to do. Um, you know, if you have a, a crank that a pipe uh, vise or whatever and you want to use that, you could you'll goof up the edges of the board unless you put something against it. But uh, cutting an angle like this and driving it between another board, you have the nail sticking up here so you can remove this board later, will help hold the deck together until you get it nailed. So because this is against here and not there, it's just one board's a little wider than the other. That is not something that I'm going to worry about. <laughs> So anyway, there's a container of, um, of the wood treatment. I have some in that coffee can. So like you see, this, this board right here is not treated on the end. So, you, you know, whether you nail it down or not, that's fine. But you don't want to get against it with another board and not be able to treat it. So I'm going to put that board in place. It's hanging over six inches at the other end. And then I'll treat that when I cut the other board to butt it against there. Alright, so this is a good example here, this next board, <coughs> of what I was just saying. And uh, I'm going to show you how this thing works, and you'll see how good it is. Now, this board is in place, but it's not nailed anywhere. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to nail this. This is my backing board to be able to try to keep the nail up a little bit. Don't drive it all the way down. Now sometimes you got to put a couple nails in if this thing isn't working for you. So I'm going to put this in here, this wedge, and you'll see this gap here close up. So that's what I'm after. Now the board is closed here. There's no sense in hitting it any further because it's not going to go closed anymore anywhere else. So that's good. I'm not going to worry about it. And I'll nail that. Now, I didn't put any nails in this board because this board was bowed this direction, so I needed to push it in the middle. If it's bowed the opposite direction, what you want to do is nail one side against, pull it up against, nail it, and then put this apparatus up at the end and use, the, use that to pry the end closed. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is when you come across a problem like this. Let's say you nail the board down, you're going to put another piece against it, and the board you're putting against it is wider than your board you already nailed down. Okay, now I cut this one over here already, but 
here's the thing. When it's wide like that, and it has nothing to do with a sawmill, it could, oh, it, it could be from any reason. It could be that the board dried faster, harder, the grain in it had lost uh, more moisture. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that if you continue with the deck like this, and it all depends on how big the deck is. I built decks over a hundred feet long, and when you start making mistakes a sixteenth of an inch or an eighteenth of an inch, and you're and you're re repeating that mistake, they get worse, and you compound the mistake. By the time you get to the end of the hundred feet, you're off uh, six inches or better. You know, if you do the math, it'll end up even worse. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to make the boards that you put down, that's nailed, which is this one, be the same size as the board you're about to put down. Okay, so this board was wide. So there's three ways you can do this. You can use a block plane if you're not talking about a lot of wood. Okay, if you're, if you're talking maybe anything less than an eighth of an inch hanging over here. You can use a, uh, an electric plane. Mark the board first. I recommend that you mark the board with a pencil and then work to that line. Otherwise, you could take it and put it in a table saw. Now, since I'm at the house here and I have a table saw in the garage, that's what I did. So now, you see that I have that thing cut. It's about a, oh, I, it's a hair bigger than the other board. Now, I could take it back and shave that off, but I only have eight foot more to go and I'm going to be done with this. So I'm not worried about that. Like I said, if this deck was a hundred feet long, you would definitely want to keep these boards equal all the way down and as straight as you can or you're going to run into trouble somewhere down the line. Okay, that little bit of a mistake would, would really goof you up. Because what's going to happen is if you leave this board here wide, when you put this board against it, there's going to be a gap there. That means that this board, instead of being straight, is technically like this. Not that drastic, but it's on an angle like this. So that's one way of doing that. So what I did was I put it in a table saw and I cut that edge off. So now that I'm treating this, again, I have to go ahead and treat that edge now as well as the ends. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so I put one uh, coat on that edge that you can see. And then I went in to eat and answered a bunch of comments. So now I'm going to put another coat on there and then I'll nail that board down. Now before I go too far like with the next board, those 45 degree angle pieces that I want to put in there, I'm going to do that now. And the good thing about waiting, because those pieces are so small, right now I have some leftover boards here, cutoffs, and those will work fine in there. So I'm just going to cut a 45 both sides, nail them in the corners there, and then uh, my buddy on uh, YouTube there who gave me the heads up on that, which I think is a good idea, then I fulfilled what I said I would do.
So when it comes to cutting around this stonework, I'm not interested in perfection, but at the same time I don't want it to look like crap. If I'm close enough that my hot dog can't roll down underneath the deck or a potato, I guess I'm close enough. So I feel like I'm close enough there. So if you look really good, you'll see it's about half an inch away, bottom stone and stuff. So I'll show you how I did that in case you don't know how to do it. Okay, so this is actually tight here to get back out. I wish you didn't have to take it back out, but I'm going to take it out just for the sake of showing how to do this. And the reason that this is, um, let me just show you this thing. The reason this board is was hard to get out is because you have this at this end, the angle, as well as a notch for the 4x4, four four. and then, you know, I had to cut that end down there to be in the center of the next joist. But anyway, here's cutting it in the center of the joist, all you do is make a square cut. That's not really an issue. But what you want to do is set that board then on top of the other board, okay, the board that's underneath it. I'm setting it in line with it. And then at this end up here, what you want to do, now my square's over on the table, but I'd use a square, line this up, bring this up to where, about somewhere right about there. Okay, so that this, this is meant to be against this. So that'll fit in there. All right, so then what you do, and what I just did, you can use a, uh, you know, I always get this mixed up, compass or protractor. I think it's a compass, the kind with the dividers. But anyway, I'll call them dividers. That way it won't sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. So anyway, you take a set of dividers or something the same width as, as this deck board. So we have that right here. We have this. Now, because I'm so high and this is all random in here, you got to look down at it and determine what is this going to hit if it's straight across. You don't really care about up in here because up here is where it's not going to hit nothing. So it's going to hit right about here. So what you do is you take a, the block. I'm going to use this square side here that's been cut. Just take the block, especially on random stuff like this. Now you want to hold this block on a 90 to this, or at least parallel like this, to this board. But you're going to hold it on the top. Look down it and look down this side here so you're looking straight. It's kind of hard to get it the first time, but you'll get it. And what you do is you go around the rock, and I'm staying a half an inch away roughly. And then I got this one that juts out here, and then it juts back in, and then this one juts out a little. And that's how you mark that board. Then I just cut it with a jigsaw. Okay? So it's not really hard to do. You can use a set of dividers as well. So imagine you have a set of dividers set at six inches, okay? There's the divider set at six inches. You'd follow along the rock, follow where that rock's gonna come out, follow it. I could have made that much, much tighter. The problem with it is getting it down all the way. The board, the rock is on the top, so it's not like an even surface for me to contend with. There's a, multiple layers of where the thing might be so this is close enough I'm happy with this it's within a it's about a half to three quarters of an inch and since it's more or less guesswork I'm okay with it so then after you got that like that you want to keep it against the post up at this end let me just show you a little better here you need to keep it against the post up here because that's where that cut was designed to fit. So, you got to get the board in there. This is very tight here, but it'll be alright. And then pull this over. And that's all you need. I'll nail that in place, and that's good enough. So anyway, there we have the, that board that I scribed on the side. Now I'm going to show you how to do the end. It's basically the same thing, but 
in case there's somebody out there that doesn't know I'll just show you what I would do with that okay so here's how I got the measurement for this board all right so there you have a board there um, let me grab my tape the measurement for the board I got from the last uh, full piece on this board which is right at that point so when I put the tape on there and my boards are all ending with the face of the deck so it's kind of easy when I measured that I ended up with 45 inches so I cut 45 inches now what you want to do it all depends on the scribe that you have the size of the scribe is what's important so I got a piece of 1x6 here I'm going to use this or not 1x6 a piece of a cutoff so I'm going to use this then to uh, scribe that. So what I want to do is I want to measure back here the width of this. So you can even you can even just set it on there if you want to. Bring this board back to the end of that. Okay, so that these two pieces are even. Now, because I'm gonna because this is six inches, I, I'm just gonna say you can come back six inches. Well, actually, it's five and seven eighths, but you could go back six inches. So now you're gonna start there. Basically, you're just holding the pencil on there, and you're going to scribe around what we have here to be able to cut the board. And there, the scribe is... Okay, so now here, we have a little something different. What's happening here is we are beyond the center of this thing, and now this side is going to be a longer cut. Okay, it's going to be... You can't use the method I showed you before where you use this point here. So here's what you do. Decide what kind of scribe you're going to use. I'm just going to use this plain cutoff. Okay. Then what you want to do is you want to measure. Let me grab my tape. I keep taking it out of my belt. What you want to measure here is the the biggest board that'll fit in there okay so what I'm looking at here is I'm, I'm just keep in mind that I'm measuring to the edge of my deck that's where I want the boards to be right on the edge so I go through here and I look and right there 39 and 3 quarters okay so what you want to do is go cut yourself a board 39 and 3 quarters just a straight cut all right so 39 and 3 quarters, and that'll give you a little board, a board a little bit bigger than this, and that's okay. So you cut 39 and 3 quarters. You bring the board over, you push it against this one. Now, we're going to assume that this is straight here, okay? Because I'm using this scribe as a scribe, what I want to do is, instead of moving this board down up here, what I want to do is move it down here. So I want to use the scribe at this end, and move it over to the end of the scribe. Just push it against the deck, move the board over even with it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me look at this thing. No, you didn't see that. Okay, let me... Let me move this camera. Okay, sorry about that guys, too much to think about here. Okay, so let me start over. Alright, you're ready to put the next board in. You see that it's longer over here than it is at the end of the board, so you can't use the method I showed you before, so here's how you do this. You measure to the longest point. Now the longest board is going to be all the way in there, okay? So I'm getting 39 and 3 quarters. So I go cut myself a board 39 and 3 quarters. I bring the board over here. Now imagine, and I'm going to turn this around just for the sake of looking at that. So now you have that straight board 39 and 3 quarters. Where do you put it to scribe it? Well here's what you do. You take the scribe, and I'm using this piece of wood, and I put it back here. And I bring this board out to the end of that scribe piece, okay? Then you grab your pencil, and all I'm basically doing here is I'm holding the pencil along the edge of this scribe 
subscribe piece, just like that. A set of dividers is great for this, and I have a set of dividers, but I don't want, I don't, I think you should know how to do this without dividers, okay? Dividers are like, you know, when you move up the rung and you're able to buy all that crap, then you buy dividers. For now, we're going to do it this way, and believe me, you can get this very accurate. Alright, so I have this on here, and I'm starting at the end of the uh, board there. Now, this piece is hitting here, so it's a little harder to do, so I'm going to just put it like that. Okay, so I start at the end of my board. I follow by holding this and marking it. I follow this up there and back. Now, I'm allowing myself about a half to three quarters of an inch, okay, gap. That I'm fine with that because it's so rough in there. And I don't want the freezing ground to move something or I don't want any stress on the deck from the rock or stress on the rock from the deck. So I'm keeping a good gap there. Three quarters of an inch is not something you can fall into. You might drop a ball down in there, depends on the hole, but it doesn't matter. This is what I'm doing. You can do it any way you want. If you want it perfect, then use a scribe. Take the scribe, hold it against the stone, and you will run your scribe along the stone, and you'll end up with a mark similar to that, but it would be much closer. So then I go and cut it on, with a jigsaw, when I put this board flush with this end, I got a nice cut there that's following the rock nicely. Okay? Now from here on, because this gets further away as you move over, what I just showed you now is how you're going to have to use every uh, board. Now, uh, when you come get to the point, like say the next board, the next board's going to be over here. Okay? Well, let's just uh, guess at it here. The, the longest piece is going to be somewhere like right in there. That's how you can measure that. So it would be 43 and a half roughly. Now, I want to leave about 3 quarters. So if I go with a 43 inch board, I'll be able to bring that over and do what I said here to be able to scribe that. But, you know, everybody thinks that, oh, it's a big deal to do this. And, you know, you're so special because you know how to make... Believe me, this is this has been thought of thousands of years ago. People used the same methods to be able to cut things very precisely. The only reason I'm not totally against that is I just told you I don't want it against it. If I wanted it against there, all I got to do is use a pair of dividers. You can use two nails bent together, a piece of wire, just to give yourself a scratch a scratch on there. That's all you're really needing. So. I gotta paint the end of that and then I can nail this one down. Now before I go too far here, we want to put them 45 pieces. Where am I at here? We want to put those 45s in here to help support this deck boards. <coughs> so we'll do that now. I'll just cut them. All I'm doing is cutting a bevel angle on a straight cut. Well, <coughs> I got half the deck done today. We got some company before, and I'm always happy to see these people that came, but you know it slows you down a little, but that's just normal. It happens. So anyway, you just have to worry now about getting the rest done. I have two full length boards over there, or three. I think that they'll finish this up. I might have to paint one or two more for the walking part of the deck. So I'm going to call it quits in a minute here. Now in case you're wondering, there's all kind of fasteners you could have used for this. There's all kind of decking material that you can use. I'm using this because I bought it, or I mean I have it. I cut it myself and I feel good about that. And I just want to see how it's going to hold up. You know, I, I just don't feel comfortable selling lumber to somebody not knowing that it's going to hold up good. So I figured why not use it for my own stuff. That's certainly a good way to tell. 
So, anyway, um, that's what I did here, and it's coming out good. I, I put those 45s back in. I need more pants. I put those 45s in that I had not put in before, which was a good idea, because you can see it's supporting these boards a little better. Um, so that's about it for today. I'm caught up with down there. I finished this after I shut the camera off before but I also when you saw me like put this one in or this one that's when company came so I hadn't done over there so I caught up with that so right now I'm caught up so another two boards and I should be away from the fireplace then or the fire pit so I'm calling it quits for today I'm tired Guys, thanks for all the comments on the other part of the thing there. I think that today's video that I'm putting up, um, even though I didn't do a lot of work, the point is, is I did give a lot of good information about cutting and stuff. So if you've watched the whole video, you might learn something. Have a good one, guys. Huh. Just in finishing up, I'll be snapping a line on here and cutting those. Those are I left them fly so that I made sure I had enough board over there. Gotta make a little cut here then and along this, which will pretty be pretty easy. I like the way it came out around the fireplace the, or the fire pit. So tomorrow I should be able to finish this. I probably won't get the handrail done tomorrow because I'm still trying to decide how I want to do it. There's so many different things you could build around there and it's only two little sections. So I want to make sure I get it the way we would like it. Or my wife would like it anyway. So, so far so good.